like to start promptly because uh, we pride ourselves on getting through the AGM as quickly as possible um, and as correctly as possible, obviously, um, so that we can get on to the more interesting parts of the evening and have a um, listen to, to our fabulous speaker and have a nice drink as well. So um, I'd like to thank you all for coming and introduce you to our president, Tim Cobb of Cobb PR. Tim, thank you, Christina. You. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, and uh, welcome to the hottest ticket in town. Uh, so, um, first of all, uh, welcome to reinforce Christine as welcome to all of you. Thank you very much indeed for coming. Um, now, my, uh, my report, um, I've got a 60-minute report and I've got a five-minute report. So, 60 minutes. <laughs> hey, thank you, Michael. Five minutes. Okay, right, five minutes has it. Um, okay, so one year on, and, and what has your chamber achieved? So the key points for me are um, joined up relationship between Eastbourne and the district business community, local authorities, and other B2B groups in and around Sussex. Another key point is a constant desire to explore new ideas and initiatives that will benefit businesses in and around Eastbourne, and we really are unlimited. A can-do attitude that empowers us to look at each and every opportunity that presents itself. So to list all the events, activities, and initiatives that we organize, support, or feed into would take a long, long time. Uh, and while I know you'd like to hear me speak forever and a day, I think Naz Hussein will actually prove to be slightly more interesting uh, than my good self. So a few highlights for you. Uh, the Best for Business Conference and Awards Night at the East Sussex National. Um, very, very enjoyable event. Anybody here managed to get to that? Yeah, great stuff, a few. Yeah, great stuff, thank you. Um, providing the Startup Support Program <coughs> and mentoring in Wealdon and the Eastbourne Breakfast and Lunchtime Networking events. And special thanks to Steve Christmas and Simon Bulteel, who have worked tirelessly with Stephen Holt to develop the breakfast meetings uh, into a valuable networking event with some very interesting speakers like Malcolm Diamond, MBE, and Gavin Fletcher of the LTA. Um, has, have people been to the breakfast uh, networking yet? Yeah, a few of you. If you haven't, do go along. Uh, alternate Tuesday, 7 a.m. at the Hydro. Um, really interesting bunch of people who go along there, and you will be made to feel most welcome. We've also had our new member evenings, uh, which have been a crucial way for, to allow new members to get to grips with what can sometimes seem to be quite a, um, a, an off-putting environment when you go in if there's a, a, a wall of sound as you come into a, a networking event, a lunchtime, or an evening one. So the new members' evenings have proved uh, very, very successful. Uh, we get the new members on first for an hour. We get them to introduce themselves to each other. And then the, um, the seasoned old hacks like me uh, turn up. Um, another particular uh, favorite was the Christmas lunch, which continues to go from strength to strength. Anybody there saw me singing, heard my lovely singing? A few people, yep. Yeah. Awesome, I know what you're thinking. Yeah, see, if you didn't come for the Christmas lunch, you know what you missed. I was uh, singing and got lots of audience participation as well. So there'll be more of that at this year's Christmas lunch. Um, supporting the Healthy High Streets project is another one that we're particularly proud of. Um, my personal favourites, uh, the incredible Neon Noel illumination on the front of the town hall during December. Thank you, Eastbourne Borough Council, for allowing us to abuse uh, the wonderful town hall. Um, the bandstand Christmas market and the ever-improving Christmas lights in the town centre. For the remainder of 2016, all of the above will continue, and it's our aim to make them even bigger and even better. If you would like to sponsor, quick plug, any of these valuable events and promote your business to thousands of residents, please speak to Stephen, Luke, Christina after the AGM. Also, uh, look out for our major food and drink festival planned for July 2017. Um, I've been looking with envious eyes at Brighton and Hove uh, Food and Drinks Festival for many years. Uh, if you've not been to that, um, although I don't want to promote a competing resort, it is well worth a visit. Uh, we've been speaking to the organisers and it looks like we're going to persuade them to come and give us some of their know-how, give us some of their skills so that we can get something similar off over in Eastbourne. Also, 2018, keep an eye out for a possible vintage Eastbourne festival. 
The Chamber continues to enjoy strong leadership from the Board and our Chief Executive, Christina Eubank. But it's an equally strong executive team that takes our ideas and action points and breathes life into them. Um, I've given them a name check already, but to show how much I love them, um, I'm going to do it again. Um, Stephen Holt, Luke Johnson and Sandra Walker, uh, they give constant and great uh, support for all of us. Um, I would pay special tribute to my Vice President, Stuart Pearce. I say I would pay, I would if he was here. Um, sadly, he's stuck at work, he can't be here tonight, but he's given me great support and guidance over the last 12 months. Um, our top flight group of Premier members continues to grow and we are genuinely hugely grateful for their fantastic support. Um, and I think some of them are here tonight. Auditel, I've seen you. Ian, where are you? Ian, thank you very much indeed. Do have a look at his beautiful banner as well, please. Um, great bunch of guys. Eastbourne Motoring Group, are you here tonight? No? Okay. Um, Maywin Baxter? Hello, Chris. How are you, sir? Um, thank you very much for your support, Chris. Zest? Hello, Julie. Thank you very much indeed. Um, Cop PR. Thank you, Tim. My pleasure. Um, <laughs> other ones that um, our other uh, Premier supporters who are not here tonight um, but do a fantastic job. Brewers, County Clean Environmental, FM Conway, Gardener's Books and Parker Building Supplies. My final thank you is to Plummer Parsons for guiding us through the transfer to zero. So that's it for me for this year. Um, but before I hand over to probably myself, looking at the agenda, um, any, any questions? And if they're difficult questions, Christina will answer. Uh, if anything like praise, then I'll happily uh, take. No? We're all okay on that one. Fantastic. Thank you very much indeed. Under the Constitution, one third of the longest serving directors seek re-election each year. Directors continuing in office are myself, Stuart Pearce, Neville Beckhurst, Ron Naylor, Bill Plumridge, Ashley Pugh, Derek Godfrey, Julie Banks, Linda Solway, Will Callahan, Rachel Stone, Claire Westbury Tong, Martin <laughs> Lullum, Michael Geetson, and Michael Ogilvie. Directors seeking re election are Alison Rayner Jones, Nikki Fisher, and Mark McFadden. No nominations have been received to join the board. So could I call for a proposer and seconder for the above three directors to be elected for another period of time? I can do this on block as well. So is there a proposer, please? Thank you very much indeed. Is there a seconder? Thank you, Will, very much indeed. So being elected to the chamber board to represent our members and fight for what we believe in is a genuine great honor but they also roll their sleeves up and get stuck into dozens of different issues and challenges through the year. So a heartfelt thank you from me to all of my fellow directors. Thank you all very much indeed for all your help, all your support and all your commitment. Um, item eight, um, over to Neville. Over to Neville. Over to Neville. Right, you may well recall from last year that uh, we actually made the appointment of auditors for a three-year term. So we don't actually need to do a formal uh, appointment this year, I think back again in 2018. But I would like, perhaps you could all join me in thanking Malcolm of uh, Malcolm Priest of Price & Co for the uh, excellent work we've put in this year. So. Yeah. <laughs> Any other business which the President may admit? That's my question to you guys. George, George Turner, um, a faithful servant of Eastbourne for decades, would like to say a few words. George, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Mr. President, and for my friend, Christine. And I just would like to say, <coughs> with your permission, as I have asked, a very big thank you to particularly Mr. McFadden and other members of the chamber who got involved for some reason or other, only their knowledge, in getting me an award by the Eastbourne Borough for my services over a lifetime. It is greatly appreciated. I treasure it with the greatest uh, aplomb. And I sincerely hope that I will, to my dying day, I will still continue to serve 
the Chamber and my Eastbourne. Thank you. We've now got uh, Naz Hussain from Eastbourne Borough Council. Naz, I think you've been tasked with about a million topics to, to whiz through tonight. Uh, yes, I had two sets of instructions. I had Christina call me about two weeks ago and gave me a very long list of things I had to go through with you. And then Tim calls me this afternoon and says, don't keep people from their drinks. So I did have an hour presentation, which I've now cut down. Um, as Tim has kindly said, I've uh, been at Eastbourne for nearly two years now, um, and uh, I have responsibility for regeneration, uh, planning policy, and the assets portfolio. And this evening, I'm going to canter through a whole range of different things that the council is doing, both within my area, but also more widely, just to give you a flavour of, of the work that we've been undertaking um, across the town. Um, I'm going to begin with the Devonshire Park complex. Um, hopefully many of you in this room have visited um, and, and know the site. It's an unusual uh, site in that it's got a very tight cluster of three listed theatres and an international sporting uh, venue, plus a major, uh, we've got Emma here tonight, a major arts venue in the town and gallery. Very, very critical to the town in terms of uh, attracting tourism, uh, very high profile performances um, and productions. However, we, uh, as the local authority, own the asset and have significant issues in terms of um, having it as a sustainable asset into the future. We had a maintenance of over £10 million. Um, we had a very tired exhibition and conference space. Um, so the quality of the bookings that we were hoping to get were actually beginning to go down and therefore the delegate spend in the town was actually declining. We had significant e-heating and acoustics issues with anybody coming to a performance. It just wasn't a very comfortable place. And critically, in terms of our future, in terms of the LTA and the tennis, the, the players are getting bigger, they're getting faster, and they needed larger runoffs. So we had a huge amount of issues. And the council took a very bold decision that rather than having a sticky plaster approach to the, to the complex, let's do something fundamental. Let's change it and make it significant and sustainable into the future. So the, the drawings you have behind me are the ones that show some of the, the ambitions and the aspirations and the planning permission that we've now secured. This is what we hope we'll do with the front of the winter garden. So really, the authority has um, taken a decision and the cabinet have agreed for a £44 million investment into the complex, which will give us much better high quality conference facilities major opportunities for new food and beverage offer, really critically for us, securing the future of the LTA and the men's tournament, but also bigger shows and more critical spend in the town as we move into the future. This is the new welcome building, which will anchor it, which will connect all of the different um, three buildings together, but also critically act as the hub. Um, we have been really delighted with the support response and the support that we've had both from the business sector, Christina, Tim and others have been very heavily involved in that and we're really excited. Um, as I mentioned we've now got planning permission and we hope to move forward and have contractors on, on, on site from the, for the new year. We're doing a lot of work in the background. There will be times when you will not be able to access the whole complex but we really do hope that the benefits for the future will outweigh the short term Absolutely, apart from the town, absolutely uh, continuing as it is, but we're, we're really delighted and the Cabinet have taken a really strong decision there to actually bring forward what we think will be a very exciting opportunity for the town and very much secure the future of those amazing listed buildings that we have. I want to move on to the Wish Tower. Hopefully you've all seen lots of things in the press. Um, uh, you'll be aware that we have got a temporary um, facility there at the moment called the Western View, which has been operating very successfully. But the council always has an, uh, had an ambition, given the fantastic location uh, um, that we have, that we really wanted to have an iconic signature restaurant on this site. Um, we have been for the last uh, eight months uh, developing uh, designs for what a new building might look like. Um, and, and these are the latest designs that Levitt Burstein have done, who are also doing the Devonshire Park Complex, incidentally. And as you can see, we're trying to make the most of those fantastic views. And again, we've been really delighted with the response that we've had from both the community, but also from the business sector, in terms of this being seen as a really important development in the town. 
Members have been engaged um, in terms of looking at what kind of offer do we want. We went out to the market, we've had an international response. We shortlisted three different restaurant operators and we are in the final stages at the moment of, of, of choosing an operator that will take this forward. Um, further information to follow, but we are very excited that we will hopefully bring a new offer, a, a, a high level offer to the town and really befits the location um, here. So that's really exciting for us. Um, I can't move forward without talking about one of the other large investments going on, private sector investment, which is the £85 million legal and general. We've got Bill here with us tonight, development of the Arndale Centre. Hopefully most of you have seen some of the work that's already started. Again, very important. It will bring hopefully 22 new shops, um, nine new restaurants, a nine screen cinema. And as I said, you've already started to see some of that come to fruition. And we hope that the whole development will be completed by Christmas 2018. So again, really, really exciting. The council's working alongside Legal and General and County Council to also make sure that the public realm improvements that we want to have are also in place. Alongside these really exciting big ticket things that we've been doing, we've also uh, made sure that we're actually also focusing on some very much probably smaller scale regeneration projects. And in particular, we've had a real focus on the Devonshire Ward, which has really been around public realm improvements, looking at the condition of our own stock, bringing empty homes back into uh, use, and also looking at commercial units and really trying to make sure that we can regenerate that really critical um, area. Um, there's lots of examples. I won't bore you with my, all of them, but you know, one of the really exciting ones, which is going to have really big impact, is the Beach Hut competition. We've got five different exclusive designs which are going through planning at the moment, and you'll see they are really brilliant in themselves, um, which we think will be a great addition to our seafront. In addition to that, um, we have been uh, working to refurbish the Prince's Cafe. Um, that will improve the, both the new entrance uh, onto the seafront. It will have a plaza, kind of a cafe area. And as well as the refurbishment, we've been working with the University of Brighton for them to operate that. So young people actually get some experience on the job in the town. And again, that is about the council being really committed to not only having any operator, but actually having somebody that can put something back and work with the university in a local context. Moving on to housing and environment. Um, the council has for, for a while been looking at our position within the regeneration sphere, particularly where we felt there's been properties that haven't been developed or the market hasn't intervened. And this is Coventry Court, which is a development that we've done ourselves. It's seven new houses. Um, I think six of them are already let. Um, and we hope we've got one that is getting their mortgage approved uh, shortly. So really fantastic trying to help where we can in terms of the housing need that we have. In addition to that, we've also been acquiring key properties that just haven't moved. So, for example, 66 to 69 Seaside, we've renovated those flats. We've bought, we've bought, we've bought the property on uh, Corner Sea House Square there. And again, we've renovated that into some three bed flats. Again, it's about helping people that need to make that first step onto the housing ladder, but also where the private sector just hasn't been able to, for whatever reasons, bring that forward. And that's been a real cornerstone of what the Cabinet have wanted to do. We've also um, continued on our ambitions to be much more innovative and look at where we can actually move forward and bring to the market things that, that haven't moved forward. Cash converters, I think it's fair to say it's been an eyesore for a very long time. We've been really clear that's not the type of business we want to have in Eastbourne. So we've actually acquired that site. The council has set up something called an investment company that allows us to go out to the market and acquire. And actually we're looking at putting some, um, some creative was in the room, we're looking at some creative businesses that may well be able to um, move forward and actually use that space because that isn't what you want in the town. So again, we're looking very clearly at where do we need to intervene and where can we really help um, in terms of bringing about regeneration. I can't go on without mentioning we were delighted recently to have won Outstanding New Developer at a national level for some of the work that we've been doing in terms of regeneration, which again, I think is a real accolade for Eastbourne in terms of the work that we've been doing collectively around trying to improve the assets that we have. 
Um, Christina specifically asked me to talk a little bit about some of the work that we've been doing, not necessarily um, big scale, but some of the things that we've been doing around bringing difficult properties back into use, where again, landlords have let them be dilapidated or you know, there's not been any um, progress that we would have liked to see. So again, you've got some before and after. There's a number of properties. I think there's been over 150 properties that mem officers have been working on. Again, trying to improve both listed buildings as well as uh, more recent ones to really ensure that we keep up a high quality level of um, buildings in, in the town. I want to finally finish on talking about some of the exciting things that we're doing in the future because we recognise and continue to work both with the public sector and the private sector. So there's a number of initiatives that we're working on at the moment. One is we're setting up a joint venture for energy and sustainability and that, that's on the back of us having done quite a lot of work through something called Solarborne, which was really around generating energy and looking at how we might be able to use that in terms of our own housing stock. And that's been very successful. So we've, we've gone out to the market and we are looking for a private sector partner at the moment to attract around £500 million investment for both Eastbourne and Lewis to look at new clean energy markets and products that we can bring forward really excited we're told there's a huge market out there and we're hoping to have a private sector partner in place by this time next year it'll be a 30-year program and we hope to use the local supply chain to really develop those markets and finally uh, very quickly as tim has already alluded to um, the given the reductions in public sector funding we have been looking at ways in which we can become more resilient whilst reducing the cost of delivering local government services and the cabinet at Lewis and at Eastbourne took a decision last month to bring together the two authorities in terms of the services that it provides. So we now have Rob Cottrell who was the Chief Executive of Eastbourne now also the Chief Executive of Lewis. Um, I've been a joint director for nearly two years and we're essentially bringing all, all of our services together over the next two to three years. We think this will generate something like £2.8 million of savings by 2020 and it is about delivering really high quality services for our residents and our businesses and our tourists. But it's also about being resilient, knowing that the public sector is going to continue to shrink. Um, so so that's, that's a big transformation programme which, which is going to be happening over the next couple of years. Um, what it won't mean is the de democratic sovereignty of the two places will still remain. So the members in Eastbourne will continue to obviously still be elected and be representative here and the same in Lewis. But there's a very strong joint effort that for us in terms of the austere times that we certainly in the public sector are still experiencing. We're never going to go back to those glory days and so members on both sides decided that we need to actually join up so we are now all going to be bringing together all of our services um, doesn't mean you won't have your services to your local area but we feel that's the way that we're going to transform to make us relevant as we move forward in what is a increasingly more challenging environment for the public sector so i've cantered through a huge amount there i'm more than happy to talk to people afterwards but uh, I'll end it there if that's okay. Thank you. Uh, right, notes from Caroline Ansel. I'm not going to put on Caroline's voice. She'll be pleased to know, um, so otherwise she'd never forgive me. So this, this is her text to us today. Firstly, my apologies for not being able to be with you this evening. Due to having a meeting about our rail railways with the transport sector at 5 p.m., I was unable to be with you. But if you've used the trains in the last few weeks, yes, you'll appreciate how vital this meeting is. Absolutely. Um, may I offer my very sincere thanks to the Chamber for all you have done during the course of the year. Eastbourne and District Chamber of Commerce is one of the most active anywhere in the country. And this is in no small part due to the commitment of Christina and the rest of the team. The leadership of the directors and, of course, and it generally says this, Mr. President Tim Cobb. You will be pleased to know the Chamber had an honourable mention this very day at the House of Commons in the Chamber from Cabinet Minister Robert Halfon responding to my question on relocating London government offices. He noted that as the Chamber of Commerce had pointed out that Eastbourne is one of the ten happiest places in the country, Perhaps they should all move there after the referendum. So we'll keep our fingers crossed on that one. 
More seriously, the main question I am asked when I visit local businesses is unsurprisingly, when will the new A27 be built? My frustration matches yours. When I became MP, I received Ian Gow's file on the issue from the 1980s. The current state of play is the 75 million already secured is subject to consideration by Highways England who want to spend it and roll a number of small scale, to my mind short-termist and short-sighted, improvements such as junctions, signage and noise softening, i.e. trees. This is woefully inadequate in the face of serious safety concerns and congestion issues. We all know this. And believe me, the Department for Transport knows that we know this. Sussex MPs are united in our ambition for a new road, and this has been made crystal clear to the DFT and the Treasury. It's all about the business case, and we have new contributions to make to that for Phase 2 monies, including our own Devonshire Park Conference Centre, New Haven Port Regeneration Plans, and big-scale house building in Wealdon. Alongside my determination in this and belief in our case, what do I do, sorry, what, what I do need to flag up is time scale. Public consultation, potential public inquiry and planning all mean that road building takes years to deliver. The decision on a new runway should be made this summer and whilst Heathrow remains the favourite according to the bookies, I have been continually pushing the case for Gatwick due to the positive economic knock-on effects for us. I have built a strong relationship with the top team at Gatwick and earlier this year was delighted to open the new pier. These connections will bear fruit. On trains, this is a fast-moving, I wish it was, an urgent situation. And I'm meeting the Transport Secretary today. I will contact Christina tomorrow. Clearly, many of the issues I deal with are transport related, and to this end, I am planning a transport summit in Eastbourne in the autumn, and you're all invited. I work closely with Treasury Ministers, and I hope members welcome the changes announced in the budget to business rates. And with the Community Secretary, I was pleased to play my part in progressing legal and general's work on the Arndale Centre, and likewise advancing ambitions for the top of Terminus Road. I'm looking forward to a new Young Entrepreneurs Business Awards, details to follow, and further work on apprenticeships and work experience. Of course, there is one other issue I haven't touched on, and that is the EU referendum. Like Parliament and the general public, I imagine the Chamber is divided. There are good arguments and good people on both sides of the debate. Whatever happens, I believe our country will continue to thrive, as will our town. There are fantastic opportunities ahead and you can rely on my support. Don't hesitate to contact me and thank you again for all you do. Please consider this your standing invitation to meet me either here in Eastbourne over any issues or concern or at Westminster where I would love to meet with you. Business is at the heart of so much of what we want for our families and communities. If fun it funds the NHS, it builds schools, offers employment, creates opportunity, so your success is vital for us all. I wish you great success and have a great AGM tonight. Could we give Caroline a clap in her absence? Please? <laughs> okay, so it's now Party Central. Uh, drinks, nibbles are over there. Thank you all much for your indulgence. Much appreciated.